Joe not help you anymore? We're going to talk about Joe. Joe is still uh, very much a, um, a a dear friend of the show, and he's just in school right now. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. We'll start with that. Well, I was, I was half anticipating seeing him. You were talking over the intro right now. Okay. I was, I was, I was half anticipating seeing him. All righty. What is all that ruckus? My, my can. Opening a can. Guys, welcome back to Jacob V. Weekly. We want to start again by inviting you to donate to Caddyshack of Hamill, Illinois. Caddyshack IL on Facebook. Donate now. We are celebrating over 700 cats rescued. Every dime goes straight to saving and treating and adopting out real cats in need. I've been there. I've seen it. Uh, help them, please. All my pets are rescued. Uh, save a life or nine. Our Patreon is live. Jacob V. Weekly... Well, Jacob V, I guess, as a as an eclectic brand of things, uh, is on Patreon. We have one of our patrons here with us tonight. My baby brother is back for the return of Jacob V Weekly. Now, we have not done a podcast in several weeks for uh, several reasons that we'll get into. And uh, everything's fine. But Patreon has not missed a week. We are posting exclusive content on Patreon every week including never-before-seen videos, uh, demos, etc. Uh, my baby brother is here. He is a member, along with a handful of... Uh, yep, there he is. Uh, he can hear that. Sorry. No, no, no. You you can hear it. You knew what you were doing. I like the sound of my own slurp. Okay. Well. What is all that ruckus? Do you hear a ruckus? I, I do not. I don't know what ruckus you're speaking of. Whatever ruckus that has occurred in this basement has, has already come and left. Okay, good. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, so Clay was asking uh, over the intro there. He was asking, uh, does Joe still help out with the show? Uh, Joe, the part of the reason we haven't done a podcast in so long is that Joe is in school. Uh, Joe is in um, school to be uh, an engineer, I think. Good uh, for Joe. Oh, my God. Yeah, and it's just really kicking his ass. You know what I mean? It's just hard work. It's hard work. I mean, a lot of my friends went to school where Joe's going to school, and it took them you know, five or six years for a four year typical program. So it's just a it's just a competitive and, and high volume uh environment. So well, you know, um, what what is the pursuit of education in the American education system without getting a good kick in the pants? Yeah, you gotta get kicked right in the pants. Pants kick. And Keenan asked me, my wife asked me if we had had a falling out, and that's absolutely not how I feel. Um I don't feel like we had any sort of a a disagreement. He just told me, Hey, I need to back off for a while because I got I'm literally doing homework Every time I'm not in class, getting more homework. So, and what did you say? Uh, oh, I totally get it. I told Joe since day one, I never want this to interfere with school unless we're making enough money to where him going to school would be dumb. And considering that, you know, um, we're in our infancy as an organization monetarily, uh, 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 not necessarily in terms of age or volume of content, but certainly monetarily. Uh, you right. know, and then you blackballed him and you took all of his shares of Jacob V Inc. Oh, I haven't paid him out of the Patreon at all. Oh. He'll see that he'll see that money when I see him. Well, you better lawyer up because I'm coming for everything. Who? What? Continue. Is that from the social network? Kind of. It's a it's a botched quote. Oh. Up, up, it's back. Wow. It's just You have so much power at your fingertips. Whatever ruckus I'm hearing is coming from your microphone. Uh I mean, I try not to bring the motherfucking ruckus. Try that. It all started at the age of nine. What? I don't know. I can't. I can't hear myself. I can hear you though. I got you. Yeah. No. Yeah. So. Yeah. I just had to turn. You're, oh, there it is. There's like a threshold on that thing, brother. Do you want me to adjust the fluffy thing on the microphone? What Are about this? Just, is this better? No, that's probably not going to help. Okay. What if I? This is a curse. Of course, this would happen. You're the only one hearing it. If I'm, I, well, I can't hear myself anymore, really. But like, I wasn't hearing anything before. This is all on your side. You weren't hearing a noise. I was. I don't know. What, you have to describe like the a, noise. It sounded like a loud, a fuzzy noise behind me. Oh, are, am I crossing some wires? Have you 
Man, see, it's almost like I, I, we should just tell them we're doing this as a bit because this is like typical Jacob V Weekly actually only works once a month and then there's a noise problem. What about? So it's probably not coming in. What about now? It sounds really what? good now. Okay, so no no ruckus? No. No, uh, no wiring or grinding or? No, everything's good. Do you want to get started with some current Donkey events? Lippin'. Here's the crazy thing is we have a lot before us, so I don't want to dilly dally. Okay. I feel like we just dillied our last daily. Yeah, we're out. So uh, I sent you these notes today. You were really worried about being prepared. I just want to catch up. We haven't done an episode since August. Of 2021? Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, and because, you know, my sweet, wonderful, our grandmother passed away. And I talked about that on the solo um, update yes. of the show in August. And, you know... And then we had, you know, other losses and other um, just challenges. And I started the podcast when I couldn't play music. And I've been playing too much music lately. So you have we've been really busy. It's been like ridiculous. Like mm -hmm. I, have, I keep a full PA system in my car. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, the amount of double sided candles you have is ridiculous. Yeah. Because you really burn them all at all. I burn ends. them all at all ends. All I'll do ends. A, I'll do a, a Hebrew Star of David candle. I feel like that could get taken the wrong way. Speaking of Jews, <laughs> Brian Laundry is on the run. I don't, is he Jewish? I don't know. I don't think so. Brian Laundry manhunt. Tipster sends Dog the Bounty Hunter to Florida campground 70 miles from family home. Why is it Dog the Bounty Hunter? That's <coughs> this is exactly know. why I want to talk about this. Is he if there's even one a thing, licensed uh, bondsman or whatever? No, he, he yeah, anymore? that's his thing. But here's the thing. For Dog the Bounty Hunter to come after you, you have to have already been arrested, and then you have to jump bail. That's his job. And so his involvement in this, which ended today, apparently he decided to take a break because he needs something. Um, uh, well, didn't you post an article or something about him injuring his ankle or something? That's it. He hurt his ankle, so he's taking some time off of the Brian Laundry hunt that he should have never been a part of. So Gabby Petito got murdered in the woods. And I don't think they've seen Brian Laundry since, and he's the prime suspect or person of interest they're calling. Yeah. Um, and uh, oh, he came back September first without her, but then they found her body and he ran off or something. I don't even right. care. Dwayne the dog, the bounty hunter, Ch Dwayne dog the bounty hunter Chapman is investigating a tip that alleges Brian Laundry, the fugitive fiance of Gabby Petito, went to Florida campground seventy five miles away from, with his parents in early September. But only two of them were seen leaving, so they think he was camping for an extended period of time in hiding. Mm -hmm. I've only sourced my media through the grapevine, so I've actually not looked in any articles myself. No, that's what I'm doing. Uh, I just hear conversations from people, and I'm just like, you know what? If that's true, I'm going to spout that shit, and I do it. And then it's just kind of like, like I heard that she came from a very troubled family that she was no longer uh, in contact with, and that maybe she might have been a little nuts. And uh, so also him, though. And we don't know what happened out there. That's so weird that that's where you felt like you had to jump in. Yes. Yeah, I chose I chose a spot. It's kind of like double dutch, you know, not every jump is a good one, but every jump is a jump. I feel stupider for listening. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucked up. Uh. Um, so, yeah, so my favorite part of this fake timeline that we live in is that recently, Dog the Bounty Hunter is in my fucking newsfeed every day. This The fucking 87-year-old bounty hunter from Hawaii. He's been doing a lot since his wife passed. Yeah, that was crazy, I wasn't it? I don't Poor know. Beth. Maybe that's what he's doing. Oh, and no, it's so young for aggressive breast cancer like that. Well, oh. I have my comments on that. Speaking of R.I.P., R.I.P., Lil Spruce. I don't know if you saw this on Instagram. I don't know who Lil Spruce is. The tree in my backyard. Uh, oh, it died? No, I don't think so. Not yet. I thought Lil Spruce was just another rapper I didn't know about. No, Lil Spruce is my baby blue spruce tree <sighs> out back that um, I hired somebody to trim back from the sidewalk, and they cut a literal doorway in it. Yeah, it looks like something out of a fucking uh, like, a, like a PT Anderson or like, Wes Anderson a, movie. With a lightsaber. I go to the Jacob V. Weekly uh, Instagram. On Instagram, at Jacob V. Weekly. I'll make sure there's a picture posted there. Uh, right now nuts. because um, it's literally the funniest thing. I tipped the guy $10 because I loved it so much. That's great. But also, are we saying that the rapper name Lil Spruce is still available then? You know, I don't know. I didn't look. That would be something good for you to do on your phone with the Spotify account that we share. I, um, I'm, I'm really invested fully into this 
podcast situation. I don't want to look at my phone. I'll get distracted. I also had Carson do a rendering of the the tree in doodle form. She's a talented artist. Oh yeah, so I'm going to post both of those to the Jacob and a Weekly. graduated scholar. Yeah, she's a gra- she's a certificated animator. Mm-hmm. Certificated. I'm going to post. I'm going to leak right now the cartoon of the little spruce with the original photo because I'm thinking little spruce may be the hoodie. Oh, a fucking, like, a, a pine tree with a doorway cut in it? Yeah, yeah why you not? You gotta see the artist rendering only at Jacob V. Weekly on Facebook. No, what did I say? Instagram. You said Fuck Instagram. It. So Brian the Laundry's still line. missing. Who knows what happened with that? And um, I don't know why he would kill her. They're both so famous. Were th- No, they weren't. What? Am Are, I missing something? Aren't they YouTubers? I don't know. I think they're both famous YouTubers. And then he fucking murdered her in the woods. It doesn't make any sense to me. I'm hoping OJ Simpson reaches out to him on Twitter. I'm just curious as to if it was like a like a an argument that got escalated and then he accidentally killed her, which does not excuse well, it at all. Well, and that's exactly what but people are saying is that um, or it could have been some kind of an accident. Man, accidents and happen. Remember, Ver- maybe um, they were drunk. Maybe myth. they were on an ayahuasca retreat and the shaman fucked her to death. Sorry. That's too much. Sorry. I mean, I thought I was going to go over line. I was going to bring up the movie Very Bad Things with Jeremy Piven and uh, and uh, uh, John Favreau, you know, where they accidentally kill the prostitute in Vegas, and then they all got to take it with them home, and none of them can really live with it. Who's in for, that one? Uh, um, John Favreau? John Favreau. Isn't it? Yeah, it's John Favreau. And they then kill it's, uh, somebody? Yeah, very bad things. They all go to Vegas for a bachelor party, Who? and then Jeremy Piven pays the hooker to go to the bathroom with him. Oh, oh, the stripper yes. to go to the bathroom with him. I think uh, sex worker the, the, the sex worker. The At, sex worker. This is mid-90s. They didn't have the name sex worker back then. They chose all the bad ones. I'm sorry. Uh, and I've, sorry, I've already said twice, just, and it's fine. Uh, but they're having aggressive intercourse in the bathroom. Yeah, and this then, I remember. And then she rammed her head buy. against a coat rack thing or a robe yeah, rack. He and, banged her head into yeah. the fucking... A uh, coat hook, the yep. fucking towel and, hook, and and she died, and then Jesus. they they dismembered her and put her in suitcases and buried her in the desert. You know, it was crazy though. Was, I didn't buy that because he does not read as hetero to me. And Jeremy Piven, yeah, and for him to be the one, um, is it because uh, Rush Hour Two? Because he does play a game. Well, in Rush probably because that was an early example of him for me. He did a great job at that. Oh yeah, I love that movie. Mm-hmm. I love that scene. I, I could have just done an hour of Could've that put scene. Put a dead animal on you. Put a dead animal on you. Buttercream, buttercream, croc skin, buttercream. <laughs> what size is the waist? Uh, so funny. Those movies didn't age well, but they sure still hold you a know, place yeah, in my that's, heart. And what I note is like, did you see Chris Tucker's um, stand up? Is this recent? Yeah, from a couple years ago on Netflix. But uh, it you, was like he hadn't done stand up in like fifteen years, and it's just not. He's very funny, but he's funnier in his movies even than I, he is. Yeah, I think he's outlived his entry into the stand up comedy world. It, no, he, well, he was a stand up. He was a de- he was a Def Jam comic. Well, he was probably hoping to jump back in like Dave Chappelle did, though, when he really popped back with that first Netflix special. Like that was a whole thing. I don't. I don't think Chris Tucker thinks he's Dave Chappelle. No, no, but he saw it like he can do it. I'm gonna do it, and then it probably didn't go well. And it wasn't bad. It was just not as raw, organically funny as he is in those movies. Mm -hmm. Also, his stand-up used to be very animated, and now he's aged. That's the thing. It's the aging. It's yeah. the it's totally the aging. Like Dave Chappelle now doesn't resemble anything like Dave Chappelle's even no, delivery as a younger no. person. He's, he's got very weird boxy shoulders, and, and um, he smokes cigarettes on stage. Well, he's thing. very um, he's um, very calm. Yeah, he's oh, I don't want to say preachy, but like um, deeper and longer winded and more philosophical. And he you know he used to be much jabbier yeah like more like gotcha bitch like that gotcha. stuff he used to be more gotcha bitch all the time uh-huh. uh, on a I mean? regular basis yeah mm-hmm. um so good i'm glad we deconstructed that that's what the world needed the podcast doesn't know about my journey with mr sanchez braxton uh are you talking about the the um the music the instrument music thief? store thief yes so this is a crazy story we got to go back several months mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. i go up to uh, a store I used to work at in St. Charles, which is like a suburb of St. Louis here, right? And uh, to pick up a guitar, and there's this kid there trying to sell these podcast microphones, which I noticed because I happen to sometimes do a podcast. Interesting. And the guys that I know at the store don't want them because they think they're stolen. And I was like, that's crazy. How do you know that? He said, 
oh, I saw a mugshot of that guy. He's from Atlanta and he steals stuff from guitar centers and sells them to other guitar centers. And, um, and you know, he showed me the mugshot. I was like, oh, that's crazy. That guy's here. Like, that's nuts. And I didn't even think two things about it. I never thought I'd see him again. People sell stolen stuff all the time. It's a huge problem. And any anything where you could buy or sell things. Um, there's going to be people trying to do it with stolen stuff. People will try to return stuff to the store that they got the stuff from without even taking it out of the store first. You mm -hmm, know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or my favorite thing that I've heard recently, you have something that you really like that's broken. You go to Walmart and you buy the same exact thing. And then you take that thing out of the package and put the old broken one in the package. And then you return it and get your money back. Boom. System. Brilliant. Brilliant. Great. They, we are not advocating so that behavior. Grants. We are not advocating that behavior at no. all. No, you know what? Fuck Walmart. It's fine. Also true. Yeah. So get your money. Sanchez Braxton. Um, then a, a couple weeks later, uh, goes into music and arts in Crestwood next door to the store that I, I work at operate and uh, runs out the door with a cello. I then get a call from that same morning from another friend of mine at a music store nearby a over on Gravois. And he says, some kid just ran out of here with a PRS guitar. And I said, what did he look like? And then I texted him the mugshot because the description that I heard from Music and Arts and from this other store both sounded, you know, vague, like they could be this guy, a younger dude with like an Afro fade and uh, which is like where they they do the sponge on top and make it like Cheeto-y. You know what I mean? It's I, it's a fly look. And so then I get the mugshot <laughs> and I send it to these dudes at these other stores. And then we start to figure out, oh my God, he's hit every store in the area. He took those microphones that he stole from one gu guitar center and he sold them to another guitar center. Genius. And then he ran out of a third guitar center in the St. Louis area with uh, a guitar the same day he ran out with that cello and that guitar from to those two other stores. There and are then three guitar centers in the St. Louis area? Yeah, Fairview Heights, because the rent uh, is nothing. Of course, yes. Bridgeton, yes, yes, yes. because that's the flagship store for the region. And mm -hmm. then Crestwood, because the rent Crestwood. is nothing. Right. Um, that's some inside baseball, bitch. <laughs> and he, uh, and then, dun dun dun, walks into my store when I'm the only one out. You on were the, the last one. You were the last store to hit. And he walks in and he says, hey, man. I'm Ben. And I say, hey, bro. And I'm like, this is Sanchez Titty fucking Braxton. And, uh, and so I say, yeah, brother, look around, you know, and uh, just let me know if you need anything. And I immediately call the Crestwood police because that's who I've been talking to because we had a violin go missing who I actually think was stolen by somebody else. But um, I called the Crestwood police and I explained that, hey, so there's I've been talking to you guys all week about, uh, you know, um, we've been crafting this case that you know there's this guy blah blah he's in my store right now and i know they're looking for him because since those guitars got stolen they never apprehended him and i have to stand on the phone and act like i'm talking to a customer i'm telling the guy the at the phone bank at the fucking police station i'm saying yeah that sounds good we'd have to see it's gonna if it's gonna be the right size and he's like oh yeah go ahead and keep talking to me act like everything's natural because i don't know if he's got a gun you know what i mean i don't know if oh yeah um, whatever. And then the whole place is swarming with cops and then, you know, they arrest him and he's like upset because he hadn't done anything in my store yet. So he's obviously upset that the police are there, but they're arresting him because, oh, this is the best part. They say to him, uh, well, after we talked to you the other day, because I guess they talked to him about something the other day, you went and stole a guitar in Sunset Hills. And he said, what is Sunset Hills? <laughs> like desperate like that like he was upset he was like why are you taking me to jail i've never i don't know what a sunset hill is well not not a lot of people have to really it's a whole thing well, I know he's, people, from, he's from atlanta oh, but, i, thought, I, I mean, know people that have lived in st louis for years that probably and we found out in the is. process that he also is using a fake georgia um driver's license and uh just all this this whole case just fell into my lap though because he just decided to go to all the, i guess i go to every music store in town often enough and it was you with your connections and your knowledge of the craft. And then next thing you know, you dextered his ass. I don't know. De I did not dexter him. Yes, you did. I didn't dexter him. Yes, you did. I did not dexter There's him. There's a lot of those private rooms there. I did not dexter him. You hung him up from the ceiling and you took a hot I, iron I kind of chubbed flesh. up when you said that. Ugh. You said you hung him up from the ceiling and I went boop. Ugh. Well, let's move on. 
I'm glad they caught him, I suppose. I just hope it's the right guy. God damn it. I hope he's in fucking jail. Otherwise, he's going to come kill me. If I died, this community would come to a screeching halt. Exactly. Who would arrest all the all the uh, instrument thieves? Oh, instruments would just be thieved all the time. All the time. There would be no. You couldn't have an instrument in St. Louis anymore. Speaking of which, you and me got to get all my keyboards out of my car before you leave. Ugh. They're heavy. Okay. Woo. Okay, I'm glad I got that off my chest. Gary Post <laughs> may be the real Zodiac killer. Cold case team says Zodiac killer ID leaking him to another murder. The Zodiac killer terrorized the San Francisco area in the late 1960s and has never been caught. We don't know if this is the guy though. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. It could just be a, a team else. of specialists who investigate cold cases says it has identified the Zodiac killer. One of America's most prolific serial murderers who terrorized communities in the San Francisco area in the late 1960s with a series of brutal slangs and unsolvable riddles. Yeah, but you know, so many serial killers came and went between like 65 and 79. Like it was just like a ridiculous booming. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't know. Maybe it was multiple fucking people trying to do some cocky. That's the huge stuff. problem with the Zodiac thing. Maybe it was someone just taking credit for the murders. Or someone just doing one thing and then somebody else doing the same thing. I mean, like a crowdfunded serial thing. Like what if... Just a couple crazy guys were like, oh, that guy killed this broad. And then he sent them a crazy letter. What if I sent them the same kind of crazy letter? Because all those children who are now the president's age, they were all growing up in a heavy lead environment with lead in the paint and lead in the pipes and lead in the gasoline. And so they were coming into their 20s and their cortexes were forming in the front of their brain and they were mm -hmm. forming mm -hmm. with aggressive lead poisoning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they were inhaling it too because it so was the, in the gasoline and it was saying. definitely in the air. Oh, it's being pumped so out in, in record numbers, brother. Breathing in all that lead. Brother. You know, back when I needed the strength to get angry at somebody, I would just chew on a windowsill. Those mm -hmm. people just had it on They were just, on stock. they were sucking it down. Christ. And... They, um, the ones of them that were bad enough that to become serial killers, they killed all those people. I mean, that's why we invented serial killers in the 70s. I mean, it was nuts out here. And now I, the I, ones I that I don't think that it was invented in the 70s. It was more just renamed, reformed in an, into an actual group. Oh, but it was also an increase. It was oh, also yeah. an explosion. No, there was. But yeah. also, I mean, there have been, there have been like serial murderers and stuff being discovered through records for like hundreds and hundreds of years now. But not nowhere near the volume. That well, you saw. And the isolated, like, practicing of the same thing over and over again and things like that. Sure, yes. Yeah, absolutely. But we, we have a serial killer in St. Louis right now. <clears throat> that is very true. We believe we have somebody who is targeting um, uh, black female pedestrians and sex workers mm -hmm. uh, in the North City, North County area. Mm -hmm. um, shooting. Sh I think they're all shooting deaths with the, uh, the same caliber of weapon, I believe. Yeah, it's the same method every time, but it seems to now be escalating because what, there was a reported of three confirmed in three days and we don't know how many before that, but FBI has come in from from Indianapolis or whatever or something. Indiana, Chicago, and Kansas and City and help out in the St. Louis branch. It's weird to have that here and now. It's very criminal mindsy. Yeah, we see a lot of brutal murders in the Midwest that um, happen across large terrains and people surmise that they could be truck drivers but this is not that this is a, a local isolated spree. thing this guy and, and he's getting apparently i i heard uh from my lovely partner that uh that uh he was shooting at a car on 170 which i believe because of some of his attacks happened up by fluorescent and things like that too yeah off of 70 and then mm -hmm. also um but that's been a problem before well, sure, anyone could shoot at a car and it's fine, but like, yeah. you know, it's not fine, but you know yeah. what I mean. And people shoot from cars at things on 70 all the time. Well, you know, traffic up there is so fucking bad. Yeah, sometimes it's not Sometimes you just got to pop something. Yeah, you, sometimes you need a pop. Sometimes you just got to do a little pop. Some, Yeah, I mean, when traffic is getting you down, mm -hmm. a little car pop, mm -hmm. not a big deal. A little car pop never hurt anybody. A little car pop. Um, also a rapper named this. Yeah, a little, little Spruce featuring Lil Car Pop. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let me just move my microphone closer. I think the compressor is causing some of that noise, so I'm going to turn it off. A little behind the scenes. How you doing over there, bud? I'm good. How's got, your beverage? I got a fat cat on my lap. I got a beverage. Lovely. Uh-huh. Lovely. Everything's good. Missouri executed Ernest Johnson. Did you read this story? 
I, I know I did not. This is from the Riverfront Times. Let's hear it. Lay it on me. This is a very controversial case because the crime was really terrible, and um, and and undoubtedly this this person. However, uh, he you know suffers from. <coughs> oh, sorry. A, d- a diminished capacity. So it's a controversial. Case. Oh well, that's the whole thing. <coughs> Missouri carried out the death sentence of Ernest Johnson Tuesday evening, ending his life with an injection of pentobarbital at the state prison in Bon Terre. Johnson's case drew national attention in recent weeks with a range of public figures from former Governor Bob Holden, who I've interviewed, to Pope Francis, urging Missouri Governor Mike Parsons, who's a goon, to stop the execution. They pointed to years of low IQ tests dating back to Johnson's childhood as evidence of an intellectual disability that made his execution unconstitutional, which I probably agree with. Yeah, that's a whole thing that you really got to kind of change. But Parson, along with the Missouri Supreme Court, rejected Johnson's claim, saying he wasn't intellectually disabled because he planned his crime in advance and made other strategic decisions. Shortly before the scheduled execution, the U.S. Supreme Court denied Johnson's request for a stay. Uh, he was convicted of killing Mabel Scruggs, Fred Jones, and Mary Bratcher during a botched robbery at a Columbia Casey's convenience store in 1994. Goodness. He shot the victims and attacked them with a claw hammer. That's that's a lot. It was, oh, re- it was really, really brutal. Well, yeah. Why do both? Uh, police found two victims in the store's bathroom and the third in a cooler. Family members of the three victims attended Tuesday's execution, which was the first by Missouri prison official since May of 2020. In his final statement, which was released by the State Department of Corrections, Johnson said he was sorry and had remorse for what he did. So kind well, of like of mice and men sort of thing. Yeah, as I say, also with the whole diminished capacity thing, is that what we call it? Um, I mean, sometimes when overstimulated or in a certain situation, it's really hard to talk somebody down that's not fully there. So he might have gotten beat up about something and then was already carrying those things and then just kind of went nuts. Well, and him even having access to a gun is a problem. Well, yeah, but we are in Missouri. Would he have... um, This is also 1994? Actually, it's probably easier to get a gun in Missouri now than it was in 94. Maybe. No, because Clinton had the assault weapons ban and shit, bro. Yeah, but also back then, think about like, I mean, outside of Columbia, you could probably just get something. Easy. (laughs) <laughs> or steal from a friend or family member. <laughs> That's my favorite. Oh, Columbia 94, brother. You could just get something. I was there. You were three. Uh-huh. Yeah. Could have gotten a gun. <sighs> just saying. But also, you know, yeah. So the, the whole, you know, diminished capacity thing makes that definitely something that should be in question because like. Well, and this is why I'm anti-death penalty anyway. Um, I think we have a lot of problems in the justice system, but even with some of the most heinous, provable cases, the room for doubt just makes it seem like, like you know, it's they play it out on TV shows sometimes. Like, a, like, do you kill somebody that's dangerous, or do you take the high road and you just incarcerate them and make them do something? I don't know. Make, I mean, make, you know, make them do some don't they fix lamps or something uh-huh, uh-huh. and sometimes they'll uh make license plates like they used to back in the day i don't know if that's it so they I'm, do a bunch of laundry industrial sized loads of laundry for like people that handle chemicals and stuff they wash them yeah because why not expose them to whatever could be on those clothings yeah that's and a better li- idea. linens i'm just so that's the thing oh, it's like so hold on before we segue uh the, um the idea that the American prison system has tried to make the death penalty better rather than just getting rid of it over the years. It's kind of crazy the amount of money they put in the situation. They got rid of the electric chair most places, I believe. It's like one state left that still has it uh, because it was too inhumane. So they had lethal injection. But does back Texas, then... Does Texas still have the electric chair? I think they might, but I'm not certain. But also back then when they were trying to phase that out for lethal injections, making it more humane, they were actually injecting people with shit tons of like potassium, which would just put them into fucking cardiac arrest. Their hyperkalemia would kill them, and they'd they die in pain and fear. So really, it was no better than the electric chair, but it definitely looked better than zapping somebody with a sponge on their noggin. And now they what they over, overdose them on barbiturates. They just kind of go to sleep and die, right? That's what's crazy. Is the I mean, um, so instead of getting rid of it, I'm I saying, also think that's the rumor that you go to sleep and die. I think I mean I think it could still be really toxic and painful. I have no idea. An injection though versus a 
I have no idea. I don't know either. And also, I could be completely wrong. That's another thing. No, I, heard, I love that you have all that input. We're making really good time. I heard on the potassium thing, which is kind of like, and I went to, when I went to paramedic school, I learned about how hyperkalemia can cause those problems. And I was like, oh, well, that makes freaking sense, you know? But yeah. uh, it still was painful and scary. I mean, anyone having some sort of cardiac event while fully conscious is going to experience all those things. You know what I'm saying? I love it. All I'm, right. I love every minute of it. Deep. So instead of them getting rid of it, they <laughs> were you about to say, right? <laughs> deep, deep, <laughs> deep. Uh, so instead of them getting rid of it, they're just saying, no, it's better because like they're dying peacefully, but really it's still killing people. You know, they could live out a sentence, but also the, the jails and all that and the prisons are already overrun with people anyway. So I guess, I don't know. They have an argument in every situation. Not that I agree with it. Yeah. DC bulldozed a homeless person's tent while they were still inside. The person could be heard screaming. Local news sites reported. They bulldozed a tent. A worker clearing out a homeless encampment with heavy machinery in the nation's capital Monday managed to pick up a tent with an unhoused person still screaming inside. Well, that's not good. They probably should have made sure that every single tent was empty before they bulldozed stuff. Did the person live? I'm looking. The affected homeless person who has not been identified was taken to a local hospital for evaluation, and they're expected to be okay. Well, that's good. Oh, that's goodness. not where I saw that going. I oh, thought they crushed him. I was him. about to say, because even when you say bold, When you say bulldozer, bulldozer, I'm thinking, what's the roller thing? No, not, not the thing from Austin Powers, no. No, um, but what is that? Uh, that's a steamroller. Is it steam still, though? No. But I think the, a steamroller you use on clothes. The, I, no, a steamroller was a thing that they would use to compress um, tar and stuff on concrete to make roadways. Why do they call it a steamroller? Because roller? I'm guessing it used to be operated on steam. I don't it used know. Used to be a steam engine? You know, you, you got a guy that comes on the show sometimes that's going to be an engineer. Maybe he'll know. I don't have any clue. I just think that maybe back in the day when it was first created, when they first started paving roads, steam power was a little bit more realistic than it is now. A little, little made, made more sense, at least. Now, Shout out to uh, Matt Riddle. Matt, this is why we haven't done a fucking podcast in six weeks, because no one's here to google anything and uh, clay's not clay's eyes aren't even open right now i, I have not opened my eyes uh, in 10 I, minutes <laughs> <laughs> i tried to get him in the shot and it's dark over there and he's laying back so motionless he's got the fu he's donkey lipping my microphone with his headphones on and he loves the sound of his own voice so I much he's just laying over there um so he's not oh, googling it oh, no i got it right here a steamroller or steam roller with a space <laughs> between the two is a form of a road roller. I was correct. A type of heavy constructed machinery used for leveling surfaces, such as roads and airfields that's powered by a steam engine. Uh, of course, since then, I'm guessing that they've upgraded. But the original photo here that I have next to the actual more current day one it looks like a fucking old choo-choo train with some big ass wheels on it. So when they say bulldozer, I, I thought they were talking about a road roller. Oh, yeah, that's what we got to. I uh, thought they smushed this guy like a fucking no like bulldozer. A it probably has like a, toothpaste. it probably has like the bucket and claw situation. So you can like, you know, pick stuff up, move it around. You get stuck on a rock, lift it. Who knows? I don't know. But also, usually they have closed cabins on those. So even if they heard the guy screaming, or even if the guy was screaming, they wouldn't have heard him. Jeez. Especially over the sound of the machine alone. Plus, the guy was probably blasting, like, Nickelback or something. Who knows? Probably, like, Eric Church. That might be it. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's the other guy's name? Um, uh, L Luke Bryan? That's the one. Well, who's the one that was just into Jason Aldean? Jason Aldean? Maybe. It isn't his, like... <laughs> I almost said, doesn't his wife own slaves? Like something came out, like his wife is like in some like crazy group or something. Um, Google Jason Aldean's wife and just go to the news on the on your Google there. As long as I'm the guy here, hold on. Um, because I really feel like like she like has a plantation with like a sweatshop or something just came out about her. Oh uh, well, you know what? That was goodness gracious. Um, Am I close? I'm, I, hold on, give me a second. <laughs> uh, he's married to Brittany Kerr. Yeah, and Brittany Kerr. Did you hit news? Won't shy away from politics amid belief. Her own followers are afraid of cancel culture. What is she in on? That's what I'm saying. She's afraid of getting canceled. Yeah, something's going on. For what, though? Did she, like, murder somebody on a Ooh, plantation? She also made anti-Biden t-shirts. Maybe that's just it. I have seen their anti-Biden t-shirts. With their young children. She yeah, had yeah, yeah. They're like, they're, like, they're like Trumper family apparel. Yeah, this is crazy. 
but also what's this about cancel culture cancel culture because you're doing stupid shit probably because you're making shirts that say joe and the hoe gotta go oh well okay so that's that's is that is that this is that's seriously <laughs> you can buy that on tina 40s website oh no that's tina horrible. 40s is brought from long island who's that a is very she's aggressive. an athlete and also having children she almost in died of she had double pneumonia from covid and she also leads anti-mask raids where they all run into walmart with no masks on what kind of fucking nightmare is that i'm telling Jesus. you and she sells shirts some of which say she joe and the hoe gotta help. go yeah, He's like we're doing the Lord to work, Jeremy. Jeremy, you better st- you better steamroll them shirts, Jeremy. If you do it, if you steamroll it, you better silk yeah. screen, Jesus. You better um, put those prints on that shirt, and I'll go buy you some McDonald's later. You listen to me. Your daddy's on the road making all the money he can. We got to make shirts that say Joe and the Ho got to go. Praise Jesus. Goodness gracious, that's ridiculous. Infrastructure failure Thank in God. dining. Clay, you have intro. Uh, you have a, a, a perspective on this issue. One hundred percent. Let's go. Um, it's a fucking nightmare. Every type of restaurant I go into is begging me to work there, mm-hmm. and uh, shit is closing super fucking early. I mean, Taco Bell so closes many. at like ten o'clock now. Jack in the boxes, like Jack in the box, actually closes, which is a problem. Jack in the box is only supposed to exist because it's open full menu twenty four hours a day. Well, not only that, but there are Jack in the boxes that have been around for I gotta be probably decades that just aren't there anymore, and it's like, oh my god, where are they all going? Uh, but across the board, it's a crisis. Everybody wants to go to Taco Bell 24 hours a day, but nobody wants to work at Taco Bell even a little bit past lunchtime. It's a hard time, but it's also not a hard time in just the fast food industry, which is hard enough. But it's a fa- it's a hard time. The Walgreens by my house, one person's working there every time I go in now, and it used to be like two or three people. No, it's a nightmare. It's Walgreens horrible. Or and it's trip. Walgreens. I'm pretty sure yeah. they offer benefits. Quick Trip also, yeah, their staffing is down. Uh, restaurants and stuff as well. If it's not front of house, it's definitely back of house. No and I'm going to say one thing. Kitchen. I'm going to say one thing thing because you and me know people that are like this and they don't understand the problem some of you guys need to be nice you know everyone that thought the world's opening back up i can be a cunt again and it's like i'm sorry no you can't do that you got to be nice to the people that went through the same situation that you went through and some people got other jobs that required them work work remotely or got them better pay or even health care in this horrible fucking situation there um like and then they realize oh i don't want to go back to my shitty fucking industry job and take shit from people all the time i still do it and i just tolerate it and i know it's building up mass it's building up a mass in me somewhere it's it's becoming a physical thing a mass like oh, a tumor yeah. i'm gonna get a tumor from these bitches at work dumb people do dumb people so what is it is it the problem that they're dumb or that they're mean about it both it's more so that they're mean about it Mm -hmm. though right i mean yeah no because if someone if someone comes into let's say i've never been to a fucking microbrewery and i'm just some lady out with my grandkids trying to have fun and we say oh let's go in here and i'll say oh uh what 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 kind of beer do you have? If I'm being nice about it and curious, it's okay that I don't know what I'm talking about, right? Right. Because I'm then, being nice, and then you'll be nice, and you'll say, well, what, do you like beer? What kind of beer do you like? Some of these are more friendly because they're sweeter. This one tastes like pumpernickel. You know what I mean? Like, you'll take yeah, her. Oh yeah. The one that I work at, like, we are very informative, and we can tell people everything about what we have available. But, so it's but not, when they come in and they demand McUltra, then tell us that we are, you know, actually, one of my, that's first, what I'm talking one about. Of my first weeks there, and this is a story that I will not forget, because this guy made me so angry, I was shaking. Uh, I was in there as one of my first shifts ever uh, with the tap room open. So I had already been working there for a few weeks. And we reopened the tap room uh, because, you know, COVID had decided to a certain way we were comfortable doing so. And this guy and his friend come in. Both look like they want to be at like stands or something like 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 a little dive bar and they come in here and they look around like this is pretty neat what's going on hey uh you know what whatever hey you uh i'll have i'll have a bud light and i was like i don't have bud light and he's like okay uh i'll have a i'll have a i'll have a a a michelob i'll have a i'll have a a miller do you have any of those and i was like no sir we're a microbrewery and what we do have available is on the screen here or on these papers and you can look over those and he looked down he looked at what we had and he's like this place is fucking retarded. He said that to my face, and I was just kind of like, okay, I just started working here. I like, like this place a lot, but you also need to understand that like, it's, it's a brewery, and you should ask that question before you start spouting off demands, not even looking at any fucking menus. And it's people like that. Would it be? Would it kill you to have a little Bud Select laying around? We had Stag on for a moment. We had Stag in cans for people that really didn't want uh, craft beer, and I totally understand that. Would need. it? I drink Bush Light on a regular basis. But would it be a problem if you just kept a few Bud Lights for those people? Well, the problem is we were we were we had Stag at the time. I sold the guy a Stag for three dollars, a sixteen ounce Stag for three dollars, and you know what? He he took it and he went and said. 
sat down, but his buddy bought a stout. It was a guest tap that we had, uh, so it wasn't even from us. And his buddy uh, drank the stout, came back and set the beer down, and uh, said, uh, this is the worst beer I've ever fucking had. And I was like, okay, dude, we don't even make that one, so I don't care that you don't like it, but I'm really, I well, don't appreciate you your tone. Say, you didn't like, I didn't know we were having an inspection. You, you're you going to come in here and you have to like the beer? That's the task? And it wasn't our beer. It was a guest tap. It it's not a even my brewery. beer. So it's called a stout. If you're not going to like a stout, yeah. may, you should know maybe you don't like, like I would never order a stout mm. just because I there I've had several that are really good. And also in this situation. And uh, some that are really bad. They were like, oh, let's get a burger because this burger place is located here too. And, oh. uh, and I told them their menu are available online they have qr codes all over the place you can access it with your phone and the guy said oh uh, are they gonna are they gonna email me my food uh, this place is fucking retarded let's go and then they walk out the door i'm like good go please don't they come left. back yes they paid they paid for their shit they didn't tip and and they fucking had that whole attitude situation and they left and i've never wanted to physically <laughs> assault somebody more actually than that situation there because you know i don't like i can't my my cup runneth over i can't tolerate mm. that bullshit anymore mm -hmm. it's hard to work in the service industry especially when it comes to fast shit where people don't think about your feelings like fast food like you have come have your conversations uh, through a, a microphone a speaker box and then next thing you know uh someone just being a dick to you and saying that they need more ketchup or some shit and and they don't care they don't care that you're having a rough day that you're understaffed that you're not making enough money and that's why everyone started quitting so this is the p picture i want to paint for people that have followed this issue on this show and then um that's a really great insight is the pandemic happens so you leave this environment you can't work and you can't even work for those people that treat you like that and then you have time to figure out what else you could possibly do to support yourself. And then the opportunity comes up for you to go back to getting treated like that. And about 3 million people said, nah, I figured it out. Yeah. Or they wrote, they wrote out the unemployment thing because that was an option. Uh, and I don't but know. So many of now. them, so many of them use the unemployment as a platform to go on to find a totally different form of employment where oh, 100%. you're not going to get called the R word for having a stout. Right, exactly. And it was just kind of like, I, it's, that, it's that exact kind of behavior that makes people. And it's also like that came from like a really like deep, like it just seems like a lack of understanding anger that some un undereducated people can have. But like protest almost. Like he expected those answers and yeah. he went in there looking to create that argument. Right. It's and, almost like, oh, let's people. go into this fucking microbrewery. I bet they don't even have Bud Light. What? I got to open a QR code for a burger. Blah, blah, blah. But then there's also the people that understand the situation fully and still choose to be fucking assholes and treat people like lesser than them because it gives them a certain joy. And this really just comes from that whole white entitlement situation that probably came back all the way from like the slave days where it's like there's someone below me serving me and I'm going to treat them like absolute fucking garbage because it makes me feel good, which is just horrible. Yeah. That's the, that's the idea that I get from like, you know, Karens or whatever that general demographic can be. It's just kind of like, let me treat this person like trash because it'll make me feel like a powerful. And what's also and crazy because I'm sad because my, my marriage is a lie and my kids don't like me because I brainwashed them when they were too young and they finally realized it. Girl, Go fuck yourself, Karen. Girl, I was, um, managing a stream for an organization the other day. And there was a Q and a for this guest speaker. And this lady says, what do we do about this trend where people just decide they're not going to talk to their parents anymore? It just sounds like a bad parent. <laughs> well, as you said, it was like a pandemic across her friend group that they just have all these friends whose kids won't talk. To oh, them. right. Yes. Bitch mama's united. Mm -hmm. What is that about? Mm -hmm. BMU. Um, I got some of their merch. They had a stand. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, they probably sell shirts that say Joe and the Ho gotta go. Yep, they, they, they do. They do. Have I a, don't know why my kids don't want to talk to me. I just told them that I'm going to call them the name that I gave them and that I'm only going to acknowledge their same sex partners uh, when they're married. I right. mean, I don't understand the big deal. That's a whole thing. Wall Street Journal men in interviews around the U.S. said they quit school or didn't enroll because they didn't see enough value in a college degree for all the effort and expense required to earn one. Many said they wanted to make money after high school. I think that's what we all want to do after high school, I suppose. I mean, I mean, I mean, if I did, if I didn't have to make money to live here, I, I could go ahead and not work. That'd be nice. I like the idea of, you know, not having to work sometimes. But I mean, do you think we do you think the pandemic really kicked into gear this thing we were already feeling about college where maybe it's not for everybody and that there's 
maybe even more ways to be successful outside of college. Um, I, I think posted things like $15 an hour salary when you need a master's degree to work someplace. Dude, there was thing. just one in my phone that I had saved from one of my job searches, I guess, in the past. And uh, it was minimum requirement bachelor's degree, starting salary twelve fifteen an hour. Yeah. I'm like, that's like minimum wage is ten ninety eight now here, which is crazy because when I mean when I started working, minimum wage was like six fifty. Well, sure. And even in the restaurant industry, you make so much money in tips, your hours is actually like usually five or less. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um the idea that like, oh, you have a bachelor's degree, cool, we're gonna start you at twelve fifty. Twelve fifty an hour for forty hours a week wouldn't even cover your student loans, much less expenses 100%. to live your life. You know what I mean? No, yeah, you would have to have like three jobs uh just to try to make ends meet in that situation. And Especially after paying off the the hideous fucking uh rates that they have for student loans yeah it took me like months on months to get down below the red on my fucking student loans i also took some time and that was my fault but still yeah you also like were a delinquent homeless criminal i was not a criminal i was delinquent and homeless <laughs> <laughs> oh Animated Geek 100 is rating with seven. I don't know what that means. Out of 10 or out of 50? Oh, she's rating us with a party of people. Oh, they're crashing. Oh, rating. I think you said rating. No. Or Raid. Oh, we're getting rated on the live stream. She brought people. We were just talking about you because we just posted on our Instagram for the show the doodle you did of my tree that got massacred. Um, seven raiders. <laughs> Uh, uh, the seven Raiders of Heart. Um, that's crazy. That's never happened. I'm sorry. I got a notification. So we do live stream the podcast. We're uh, doing it live. We're live right now on twitch.tv uh, slash Jacob V and uh, so forth. And we were talking. We it's a, it was time to leave. It was time to move on. Um, maybe we need a positive note now that we're an hour in. Are we really an hour in and we all be talking? We just talk about sad shit this whole time. Um, we're like 45 minutes in. The stream's an hour in because we, we launched early to let people know it was going to be live. But Oh, no. Um, I think probably the most positive thing that I've, I've put in my podcast notes since the last time we did an episode was Steve never forgot us. Steve from Blue's Clues. Steve from Blue's Clues decided that the world was so messed up that he had to come back to us and just say, hey, I love you. And it really moved me. I think that someone paid him to do that. Well, thank God for that person. That per if seriously, actually, it's more believable that he did it out of the goodness of his own heart. I think he did it for PR or for PR. Even if someone actually hired him to do that, that person deserves the Nobel prize. Yeah. If he has an agent, that agent scored gold right there. Cause that thing went viral. Quick. I thought you said Asian agent. I thought you said if he has an Asian, if, if his agent is Asian, then that's, that's its own if he's thing. got an Asian agent, yeah. she needs a vacation because that was a genius move. Uh, if you haven't seen this, you've been Probably living under it. a rock, but Steve from Blue's Clues decided to come back and let us all know that he never forgot us and that we should look at how much we've grown. I sure shit forgot about him. That's the thing. I, I forgot. I mean, you know, I say Blue's Clue a lot because that's how my little Oswald looks. He's got a very cute, cartoony little face. Your dog looks like a hippopotamus. He looks like a little baby hippo, baby yeah. Fiona the years. from the Cincinnati Zoo. I, I get the hippo live stream sometimes on my feed. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. see him on TikTok a lot, the hippos in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. What were we talking about before? It doesn't, we were talking time? about how men don't want to go to school anymore. Fuck it. Oh, I yeah, mean, who cares? Listen, bitches, I need someone to work at McDonald's. It's a fucking nightmare. Every time I go up there, they won't even take your order. They'll be like, okay, let them catch up for a minute. They like pipe up the fucking... They won't even take your order and make well, you wait for it. The value of the dollar is dropping so rapidly at this point that it's just kind of scary to even think about having to afford something. I mean, you have to have like a, a, a hundred thousand dollar salary to even comfortably live maybe at this point in time. It's crazy. Is that I, I don't know that is it that the dollar is dropping in value or just things are getting more expensive? It's rapid inflation, which is decreasing. I the guess value it's the, of the same dollar. thing, really. Yeah. Yeah, as inflation happens, the value of one dollar goes down. So yes, USD is crashing slowly. Like a like a what was that movie where the dude's plane crashing quicksand, and they just start going down? Was that Jungle Book? 
Was that, oh, a, wait, was that no. a live action jungle? No, 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 book? no, 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 no. That was the mummy. The mummy returns with Brendan Fraser. No, no, no. What's the? Oh yeah, he. No, but what's the movie from when we were kids where the guy drowns on quicksand? Wasn't that also the Mummy Returns? Is that what I'm thinking of? With the with the 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 weird zombie pygmy things, and then like the uh... no, see that was there's a lower fi movie. Can you Google guy drowning in quicksand? Don't Google that. Uh, um, Google please it, don't. I don't want oh, to. don't do it. Um, because that's the thing. Is uh, I was also talking about that at dinner with some friends of mine that uh, there was a third Mummy movie with Brendan Fraser called. Um. To, like Tomb of the Dragon King or something. What? In China with Jet Li. 2008, Brendan Fraser reprises the role to go to China with Jet Li. Um, mummy. Oh, shit. There was a quicksand scene in the Jungle Book. Okay, so there was a Jungle Book movie with like Mowgli as an adult, right? Yeah. Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. I was right. Not King. <coughs> and, uh, yeah, so there was Mummy Three with Jet Li in China. That's different. That's see. But there's also the Scorpion King, which was the American like, which was the on, Rock. Yeah, the, in his own the Mummy spinoff to the Scorpion King. And then there was the reboot of the Mummy with Tom Cruise. Uh, now was that Imhotep? Was the bad the bad Mummy in that one? The uh, the bad Mummy in that one was a lady. I don't know. No, I'm not watching a m- lady mummy. I'm not doing it. Well, I think that they ended up being like the corporation is evil, and the, I don't. I'm, spoiler alert, but no spoiler alert because I didn't really see anything. I just saw a clip from it. But like, they like had imprisoned the mummy and it was like freezing mercury in her or something, and then it's like, oh shit, <laughs> and then it's like the the company is bad, and it was a whole fucking weird spin. It was. I don't think it was a good movie. I think it crashed real bad. No, I didn't even bombed. see it. It's okay. Carry on. Footprints discovered could indicate human presence on North America as late as 23,000 years ago. Are we surprised? Yes. Why? Because they didn't think we had been here uh, then. Well, you and I definitely weren't. We Ancient came over on a boat. Push back dates of human arrival. No, I don't want. I don't want to buy. I don't want to buy this. Well, wasn't there the point where all the continents were all connected and then they split up? Pangea. Well, here's the thing: fossil footprints show humans in North America more than twenty-one thousand years ago. The footprints, the earliest firm evidence for humans in the Americas, show that people must have arrived here before the last ice age. I believe it. Which is way earlier than we originally thought. We thought the Ice Age allowed them to travel here from Asia or whatnot or something. But if everything was once connected and then everything split, why weren't there people on all sides? But that's this whole thing. That There's this whole thing about people thinking the Earth is older than it is and that there's been civilization even before the Ice Age. Because really a lot of the stuff stops in the ice age with you know that kind of stuff well, a lot of things i think died in the ice age but also yeah the archaeology is more difficult there's also this theory that the sphinx is much older than originally anticipated and that the pyramids were actually built next to it thousands of years later yeah the sphinx doesn't even need a driver's license anymore you just know that bitch old <sighs> sorry continue a Colorado school district has fewer than a quarter of its normal supply of cafeteria workers. Efforts to, efforts to directly hire social workers in New York City schools are leading to shortages among mental health nonprofits that provide in school services. And some schools in Virginia have shifted to virtual learning after administrators couldn't find enough substitutes to cover for teachers who had been exposed to COVID 19. Yeah, no, that sounds about right, too. I think that no one should have gone back to school as early as they did, but just a bunch of I'd probably still be in education if they didn't force us to go back in October pre-vaccine. It's just it's kind of crazy to think about the amount of people and the dumb rules they place in these like compact hallways and rooms and kids don't want to wear fucking masks. I barely want to wear a mask. I do it because I have to. And then, oh, man, the amount of people that don't wear fucking masks anyway, you know, there's a city mandate. Anyway, I'm, I'm spiraling. It's fine. But, like, yeah, it's ridiculous to think that anyone is surprised by that. I mean, no one wants to go back there and do that shit. All across the country, school districts are posting signs in towns and notices on social media with humble but urgent requests for more school bus drivers. The mayor of Chicago asked the private rideshare companies Uber and Lyft to fill school transportation gaps. 
Massachusetts official called in the National Guard to shuttle students after bus driver shortages threatened to upend the start of the school year. Now, see, if that is the problem, then isn't the real problem making kids go back to school? Like they can just they well, can they can provide for the, the budget that they're supplying. I'm guessing that they can provide some sort of no. Here's the problem: home they can system. pay all these people. They can afford, but nobody will agree to take the money to go back to work in that environment. Yeah. Um. Be, but people want their kids in school, and maybe kids are do maybe kids are better in school. Not the schools I worked in. I think a lot of those kids would have been better in a virtual learning environment than in the fucking shams that I got to witness in my career. But, um, the, yeah, maybe the issue is, Hey, maybe we don't have the infrastructure to send kids back to school right now because the stakes have changed and people don't want to drive a bus and get COVID and die. Yeah, that's exactly it. And, and so that it's insane to put such underdeveloped human lives into a group together and tell them a rule and expect them to follow the rule, which is be vaccinated well, if they don't you're follow, not wear a mask they don't even follow if you don't wear a mask they yeah. don't follow any rules anyway and that's like what's that uh, someone was telling me how uh, there are school districts that like if your child tests positive for COVID and has to quarantine but they're vaccinated they get, ex- they get an excuse for that but if the parents or the child themselves if of age uh, has chosen not to become vaccinated and they test positive for COVID and they have to do that, then they have to make up those days or even do summer school or something because it was their choice to put themselves in position to then quarantine for COVID uh, by not getting the vaccine. So then, you know, they have to, uh, you know, suffer that loss by missing two weeks of school, but they could have just been learning from home if nothing had gone back to schools. I still wholeheartedly believe that most of the ideas were put out by rich people that got sick of being around their fucking kids all the time. Well, that's the thing. It's not even, I mean, it's all people that, I mean, they don't want their kids to be at home and they Because kids are fucking monsters. Yeah. It is. It's true. It's a so thing. What do, we, what do we do about that? Because these people have all, I mean, because it's like they have this entitlement to the education, to the to the babysitting environment. Well, unfortunately, that's not going to happen, but everyone needs to go back home. And well, I think it's also better. I mean, I think it's better learning in the classroom, but no, you can't get people to do it. Yeah. Also, yeah. Why would you want, I would, uh, you couldn't pay me twice whatever you were making as an educator to go into a room and try to teach a bunch of fucking crazy children that can't keep their, their asses in seats and masks on their faces. Something. I might. No and that's like, like TikTok and social media now is so like over the top and corrupting and just like, that's where their attention's going to go. It affects me. It affects me. I, I spend way too much fucking time on my phone. So I can't expect teenagers and stuff that just live on this shit to not look at their phones and pay attention to school. It's way worse than it was when we were in there. Oh yeah. Yeah. I had a Motorola Razor. Yeah, and you could text, and that's kind of about it. I could text in my pocket without looking at it yeah. on my Nokia like brick phone. Like the Departed, just like it, that thing in the Departed. Yeah, just like in the Departed where he texts in his jacket. Exactly. He sends the money sign to let him know that the tiki mm-hmm. and the laundry are in the building. Mm-hmm. And he, I, I, I think that that was a, an Asian racist joke that Jack Nicholson's character made. I don't know if you can say that. I, can, I didn't say it. It's true. Okay, that's fine. He said no ticky, no laundry. He was making a reference to how Asian people work in uh, laundromats. And it was it was an insulting joke towards the other people's peoples. You dig? T9 was a really cool thing that I'm really glad that they used in that movie. Uh, I, I sometimes oh, that, think about T9. The Departed T9. was full of T9. Yeah, but also think about T9 back in the day, how fast we could type. How fast we could type something where you got to hit just two, like four in, times. Just like in The Departed, when they departed in The Departed. Yes. Am I going too far into this? But T9 was fucking crazy. No. I could T9 while driving. No, no well, hey, listen. <laughs> nice. I don't think texting and driving is the problem. When I feel the most dangerous is when I'm trying to set up a Postmates and drive. Well, yeah, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't That's do that. fucking hard. But also, if you're driving and you're getting Postmates, why don't you just order carry out from the joint that you're Postmates and get it yourself? Because I want them to meet me there. Interesting. I've done that before. I'm not going to lie. I've ordered a pizza and timed it so that I perfectly got home when the pizza man was getting there. Exactly. And it worked out wonderfully. But at the same time, I scared him because I approached him from the street and not from my front door. <laughs> so that's my pizza. Yeah. It's like, hey, are you looking for Clay? And he's like, oh. And I was like, that's my pizza. I'm Clay. And he's like, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I just, I ordered early so I can meet you here. And he was like, okay, but you scared me. I was like, yeah, I get it. Yeah, that's fine. It's a whole thing. I, I'm digressing. I'm sorry. 
So with the wealth equality inequality in this country, uh, maybe we should skip the fucking Hunger Games pageant at the fucking Met Gala. Did you see this a couple weeks ago? The crazy outfits of the Met Gala? Why are we doing a Met Gala in a pandemic? Because rich people are bored too, and they can make money by selling crazy clothes to rich people to wear at the Met Gala. It's all a capitalist ploy. You know this. We got to work to live and live to work, baby. Biden's America. It has nothing to do with Biden. It's been going on for years. But <coughs> I don't know. That's my idea on the situation. Yeah, um, Carson, I can't change that setting in, in midstream. I'm usually streaming Apex Legends. That's why it's set up that way. I have a lot of cross. Will you let me manage? I can't change it right now. I'm glad to know you're distracted by the chat and I'm just over here talking about No, nothing. you're doing great. You're entertaining the real audience on Patreon. Well, I am part of that. Patreon.com slash Jacob V. It's really now this is an investment of time and money since I'm here. And I No, it's really money. good. You'll get your cut. You'll get your cut, Daddy. The I'm Patreon certain. supports this show. And it also, in return, you get uh, exclusive content posted every week, including um, never before released uh, things of all sorts. Jesus Christ. Uh, you got to plug that. That's the only advertisement on the show is the Patreon is the Patreon for this show. I well, donate your support for that. Uh, that Caddyshack. Caddyshack. Yes, I do that out of the goodness of my heart. Yeah. In Mark Hamill, Illinois. It's in Mark Hamill, Illinois. Mark mm -hmm. Hamill's been there. Oh, I'm certain that he has. Yeah, I'm thinking for the Patreon when we hit double digit subscribers that I want to go ahead and do a live from Caddyshack uh, episode of the podcast. Are you saying that I am one of nine or less people in your Patreon? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Oh, yeah. It's, it's just nice to keep it all. Yeah, tight. you are a, the cornerstone of an infrastructure that we're building. You have a unique opportunity here to be a part of an infrastructure. Investors, possibly you. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Well, uh, George H.W. Bush's college roommate with whom he'd later be seen fraternizing with in Dallas befriended Lee Harvey Oswald. H.W. would later report not to know where he was the day Kennedy was assassinated. So just live with that. I like to sneak in deep state fun facts into the podcast. Well, you know, my whole thing about Lee Harvey Oswald is actually I think I listened to a podcast on him and um, it was very informative. And I, I think that. While he definitely did seem a little crazy in the end there, there were some very social years. Social? <laughs> yes. I was talking about, do you not know anything else about, what do you mean? I listened to a podcast about Leo, Lee Harvey Oswald. It was a two-parter. And, um, I mean, there was a whole thing, and it's a little ha hazy because it's been a few years now since I listened to it. But I think I remember that there was like a, a, a social period. He wasn't just a shut-off guy. He probably talked to people, had friends. Before he, you know, went all nuts and Manchuria and Karen to date and killed a. But I'm saying, <coughs> okay, I'm saying that when Kennedy was assassinated, assassinated. So, what are the chances that the future director of the CIA would be college roommates with somebody who was friends with the guy who shot John F. Kennedy in the head? Oh well, you know, it was all done by the government anyway. I'm saying it was done by the fucking Bush dynasty. He was, a fun, he was a he was a black cell, wanted? brother. Oh. He was underground. Yeah, he was not a civilian. Listen, I don't want to get too much into it because this I don't is why anybody. we're here. This is why we're here. I don't want to offend anybody, but you have to admit <laughs> that any major assassination, assassination, I did it too. Well, every any major a major assassination of a of a political figure was definitely organized by other politicians. All of them. You heard it here first, folks. It's just really easy to pin it on somebody that nobody fucking knows and make them famous. You know, this give them their fig, 10 minutes. This is a fig scented candle dipped by hand in France Shit. by Diptyque. Danielle got you a candle and I forgot to bring it. Oh, I have Ram for her. Oh, uh, yes. She also wanted me to ask you about the Ram. Yeah, it's, it's in my foyer. How many gigs of Ram do you have? I think I got her like 16 or something. 16 gigs of Ram people. Maybe 32. God damn. I got her two sticks. That, that's probably 16. I'm having the weirdest deja vu. Um, so this was Johnny McGovern's recommendation. Shout out to shout out to, to my podcast hero, Johnny McGovern. Figuere by Diptyque. That, that sounded okay. Uh, it's French. It sounds like it. It's fine. I'm still mad about 9-11. I'm still mad that we have war criminals that have never been brought to justice, who messed up our nation and mishandled at least. 
a tragedy that I just so happened to maybe like, you know, they let it work out in their advantage. Cameron Baker was the coolest kid in fifth grade. He's the first person I think of when I think about where I was when 9-11 happened because I was at school. I was sitting next to him and I told him where how it made me angry when the towers fell. It made me angry that something like that had such an influence on the world I was growing up in. And I'm mad about, you know, uh, that I'm mad at, just like how I'm mad about our parents second divorce because how much harder it made our lives. Not because the incident itself as much, but more so the inconvenience. And I'm mad that Cameron was the coolest dude in the world with every privilege or blessing you could ever want. And he's fucking dead because even his family couldn't heal the pain of his addiction. Right. Well, I mean, that that's happened far too many times. And actually, a lot of people that went to our exact same uh, school Isn't district it crazy? had that problem. I mean, the them. number if you had told me that like a dozen really popular, talented, healthy, athletic people would die of like cardiac arrest in their sleep. Or a brain aneurysm. That actually happened to somebody That's the too. one, too. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It's, so, and it's, it is nuts. But I mean, you just This is why really I get down it. the rabbit hole, though, with George H.W. Bush being in the CIA and shooting John F. Kennedy in the head. He, uh, he didn't do it. He had he, him and his saying. people had a fall guy. But it guy. upsets me because it destabilizes the universe that our children grow up in. Really, that of all things, that I think is why it affects me emotionally. I've been see what what I do is with my normal regimen of medications is I try to get really introspective and I try to think about where my anxieties come from. I try to speak well, to the emotion and not from it. So if I listen to a conspiracy podcast that I find entertaining, yeah, um, but I get like terrified or my mind is blown or whatever about the crazy stuff that happens in the world, like things like people letting the president get assassinated because they find it politically advantageous. I think that was probably traumatizing for children at the time. Well, and also, I mean, you know, domestic acts of terrorism and assassinations and things like that kind of do just really make the government able to flush money towards the defense budget. That's really brilliant. That's so insightful. You see how smart you are? You, you are know how rich this country is in, like, military situations other than other than everything else going broke like the amount of money that's gone trillions of dollars that have gone towards the defense budget over things and it makes you wonder and it makes you listen to those uh those pod those podcasts or articles or anything those uh what, what what's the uh i'm sorry i'm blanking on the word you just said it uh not hysteria what is it when someone's trying to traumatizing no 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 the 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 the, the mm, 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 mm. conspiracy conspiracy theorists Jesus, man, I really had a moment. Sorry. Uh, the conspiracy theorists, like, sometimes they make fucking sense, especially when you realize how broken this fucking country is over and over and over again. And just having the uh, availability of the world at your fingertips now makes it so easy to look into that shit. You have to decide what's real or not. But at the same time, if the United States were behind their own acts of domestic terrorism to blame it on somebody else and then flush more money into the defense mud defense budget to then take over other lands for things they could gain from maybe oil, you know, maybe saying they're taking out a threat for other reasons and then actually finding something else that's useful to them. It's, it, it doesn't sound fucking crazy. It really doesn't. It sounds genius and horrible and corrupt, but it, 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 it doesn't sound crazy. Not in my eyes. Yeah. Somebody in the chat had a good point. True beta blue. America should bring it up more and change nearly every rule and regulation America has ever had against the American people under the guise of protection. If they want me to remember, I then I don't know what some of that means, but I think it's exactly the point I was trying to make is that like we create this scary world where um, kids can't go to school because we can't agree on whether or not people should be wearing masks or taking vaccines. So kids are living in this chaotic environment when they're um, in uh, different places every day. They can't be in classes with their teachers. It's been a couple of years now since we had a normal school year. Yeah, and that's not helping anything, but also trying to force them back into an old way is also not a good idea. No. When you really think about it, having them at home with access to education from a safe place, not being well, put that's into the problem. fucking There's rooms so much and jam-packed together, and then it just causes spikes again. Yeah. And, and then that's why no one wants well, to come to Well, and too many of them don't have a safe true. place at home. So too well, many of them, that's not safe. And that is unfortunate. And that is something that also the school could use their, their budget that they're saving from not fucking having to pay people because no one wants to fucking work to maybe organized you know some sort of 
situation where kids could learn in a safe space, but maybe more of a protected cubicle style situation or something where they are separated by barriers so that they don't have to possibly risk themselves of becoming, you know, sick with COVID-19. Does it make sense? Yeah. I also think bus drivers weren't working for so long that they had to go get other kinds of jobs. It's just not organized enough. And they know that they, they throw a Mac in the schools yeah. and they the bus drivers didn't get paid when we shut down. No. No, I'm getting. I'm guessing a lot of people just kind of lost money in general. Well, and they went to go do something else. And they probably weren't paid for hours that they had worked at leading up to that event. And then that was just the the people that were hiring them saying, like, you know what, our business is going to crash because this is happening. We can't afford to pay you. And I'm sure that there was some sort of legal situation, you know, taken up in that. But I'm guessing it happened in a lot of places. You know what's funny? I bet I wrote that bit about 9/11 on 9/11, but we haven't done a podcast in six weeks. You wrote the bit about. Cameron the, Baker. I, well, just the whole thing about my emotional response to because 9/11 is one of those things. I think about it all the time. Um, years because the uh, well, yeah, because the Afghanistan war thing is still a problem. It's had such a big deal, and so I just think about that day all the time. I do feel bad enough that my head is so far up my ass on a regular basis that I honestly have not looked into the Afghanistan situation at all at all i see stuff on social media and i'm like oh that that's ridiculous that's crazy and then i'm just kind of like well i want to go look at this funny cat like that i i do that way too often you're so, just on tiktok is what you're saying well tiktok and instagram and facebook <laughs> and now there are reels on instagram which are just tiktoks taken from uh tiktok yeah i love instagram. when they don't even take the tiktok yeah. part off the oh, tiktok the reposting oh, that's so funny and now reels are on facebook too because facebook owns instagram and they got to try to make up for some lost time because they fucked up royally <laughs> You heard about Facebook and Instagram and the lady that uh, like leaked like terabytes of information of their fucked up shit. Is that why they were down for a day? Yeah, I had a lot to do with that. But also like, you know, this lady sent um, some shit to some sort of organization and then to a journalist, terabytes of information talking about how, um, you know, how their systems target, you know, the belittling of a physical sense to like young women or girls uh, to try to make themselves feel bad. So they want to buy things uh, and hold themselves to some sort of beauty standard. And then also, you know, the, the fucking non-filtration of hatred and fucking toxic stuff that actually can make people, you know, uncomfortable and all that. They, they, they had the choice to do a certain amount of protection to like their followers and then they didn't because it made them more money in the long run somehow. I didn't look into it fully, but I, I, I've i heard things. Like I said, no, you're most, doing great. most of my bullshit is purely hearsay and grapeviney. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're in a zen mood right now. I'm glad it made you take that extra hit. You're talking about the seltzer? Because I, 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 I do really like ahas. Yeah, remember I said, make sure you have two seltzers. I know, I already drank both of them. Can I have another one? Yeah, baby. You want ice? I do, but I really don't feel like getting up. Here, I can, I'll can. i do the whole thing, but you got to keep talking. You want me to give you your topic first? Do it. Lay it on me. So my next thing, Pruitt and Bird, 13 and 14-year-olds detained for planning school massacre in South Florida. I'm sorry? So So what? these kids' names are Pruitt and Bird. Uh-huh. I'm guessing that's their last names. No, those are their first names. Oh, my goodness. And they're 13 and 14, and they were arrested in Florida because they were buying weapons on the dark web. They were stealing weapons. I don't even know how to get to the dark web. They were learning how to make pipe bombs. So talk to me about that. What do we do with a 13 and 14 year old boy who's who have who've been visited by the police at home 87 times before 87 times collectively between the two of them before they were arrested for plotting a school massacre? Well, talk I mean, to me about if, that if while I get your refill. If it's eighty-seven times, and uh, maybe split between both of them anyway, and uh, clearly these are some deeply troubled individuals, and uh, that that that's crazy. But also, you know, having access to the resources that they do is, I guess, also a problem. Um, shit, I didn't really think about looking up how to make pipe bombs back then. That's for sure. Uh, maybe they were pissed off because their parents made them go back to school. Well, I don't fucking know. That's a situation. Let's just go right back to that. Let's circle back. Cadillac. What do you do with them, though? What do you do with them? Uh, well, uh, d juvenile detention centers, I'm guessing, oh. is what would be happening to them until they seem reformed, but even then they probably aren't. Whatever's happening to them has already happened. So That's made them already them? angry enough that they think that they can do something like that for some sort of higher cause. What do you think if we're being honest, at that early of an age, having that kind of hatred or anger probably is coming from something from inside the house. And they're 
probably were beaten or molested or verbally abused or something like that. And they're harboring some deep seated hatred and they want to take it out on something else. They're projecting their angers and frustration on something that's outside of their comfortable environment, whether it may not be a, a comfortable environment or not. La la la. Uh, and so they're like, you know what? Instead of uh, killing my dad in his sleep, I'm just going to go bomb this school real quick. Hey, Pruitt, you want to go do this real so, quick? You know what I thought about when I, when I heard, when I read this story was, um, my own childhood, thinking about all the frustration and all the feelings of the world not being fair and feeling like everyone around me had things that I didn't have, but I didn't do any of these things. I didn't plan to hurt anyone. I didn't want to hurt anyone, right? So talk to me about that. What, what, put yourself in their shoes for a minute. I mean, what really upset you when you were that age? At 13? Yeah. A, a 13 what made you feel like I, unwelcome or well that was probably a year or two after our parents got divorced for a second time so there was a lot of moving around there was a lot of trouble there was a lot of probably arguments that we didn't want to experience but also in isolated incidents or but environments how did you feel about your peers or how did you feel amongst your peers uh, as a 13 year old yeah i didn't fucking know i didn't really i i bounced around and talked to different you friend groups like and you wanted to hurt other people oh definitely not no no I, I didn't feel like i wanted to hurt other people hell no uh, you know, even if I did have any frustrations, I'd maybe like, you know, take it out on a fucking video game or something rather than trying to look up on the dark web. I still don't know how they fucking found that. Look up on the dark web, how to make pipe bombs and shit. And also I'm curious as to what the police are going to their houses for 87 times or whatever. Like I want to know about what are their other offenses, other concerns. Maybe they had a history that led up to it. Maybe it was all very trackable. Maybe it all trended and the police actually failed to get there. Um, almost failed to get there in time to actually stop the situation at hand, you know? And also, maybe they should question the fact that whether or not they are in a comfortable situation and Child Protective Services should be brought in, even though I don't like that system, because I understand that it's not well taken care of. But yeah, so really, um, I mean, if the police had enough calls to those residences to report all of that, maybe they could have gotten to it before the kids had access to something like that, or even had the idea in their head to build pipe bombs or other sorts of weapons of destruction that, that they could just make out of household materials. That's ridiculous. At this point, yes. Are, are, should they be treated uh, in a certain way for what they've been doing? Yes. Uh, is it, does it require like, you know, like, like prison style shit? No, but like some sort of like system of observation or whatever because clearly if they're just gonna be going back to it and going back to it and going back to it they're gonna get what they want or they got to get reformed in some way i guess but even if we had that infrastructure in place guess what nobody's taking those jobs no way and it wouldn't be properly funded that's for damn sure well even if it was i mean the, the other thing is the people actually doing the hard work aren't getting enough of that money and the people that have the money don't want to give people the money because right. greed is a thing. Well, and the hoarding of the wealth and the whatnot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is why dragons mm -hmm. sit on, you know, piles yeah. of gold. And this is what happens when you get a bunch of boomer fucking mm -hmm. dragons with their big fat asses plugging up the economy. It's called hoarding. They have, they, they, they lay on hordes. Yeah. Yes. A dragon yeah, from, uh, from the Latin horde, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which means get your fucking ass out of the dragon treasure. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying know. to stimulate this economy and I don't drink anymore. So it's hard because I don't have $300 bar tabs every other day. Yeah, but I'm also betting that you drink enough Diet Coke that uh, you don't have to have a bar. But tab it's hard. It's they can't hard. even get people to sell me the Diet Coke. People won't work at the Diet Coke place to sell me the Diet Cokes, brother. Then quit drinking Diet Coke. We have a really, oh. good, we have a really good water system here in St. Louis. Okay. I'm going to drink water. <laughs> okay. You're right. Why did I have oh. I have friends that have moved to other cities from St. Louis and say they miss St. Louis drinking water. That's crazy to think of. I got a buddy that moved to Chicago. It's no, like, the what, water here is really away. good. I I've always really said good it. Water. I got I took this environmental sciences course when I was in Webster. We have a toilet canal that runs through half of this county, and we still have good water. Well, no, that's the thing though. It's because that is taking all the sewage down south of the sewage treatment plant. The River de Pair is actually just an aqueduct underneath it, or two insulated pipes full of sewage so that's not sewage in the river des perez that's just rainwater the river of des perez has plenty of stuff in it that you don't need but we body. pull all the water way up river way up north 
and we dump it way down south, and we have an ideal drinking water situation. It's the best drinking water in the country. Fuck Brooklyn. I'll say that for nothing. I don't think Brooklyn probably has the best drinking water. I'm don't they have that bagel company, the Brooklyn Bagel Company? That's like a franchise, and they make it with water from Brooklyn? Um, everything's made with water from a certain source. You could still filter it yourself. No, I'm saying, but it's better water. The filter, uh, the filter system at, uh, at the brewery that I work at. Donkey we, piss say, we know out Saint of your Lewis water, water brother. You can't. You need a good filter, brother. You got to have that natural. You got to have the Holy Ghost. The m- there are some that use coconut to filter the things, Mississippi coconut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, this thing is going off the rails. Yeah, coconut. Uh, there are coconut filters are a thing. They're big capsules that are filled with coconut and shit, and they filter stuff. That's about all I got. That's about all I, all I got told about it when I was looking at one. On the dark web. So Pruitt and Bird. I mean, I think we need to dedicate excesses in our wealth as a nation to keeping desperate situations like this from naturally just occurring to our neighbors. Also, people that want to name their children first names Pruitt or Bird. In this case, I think we execute the whole bloodline. Well, yeah, but I think we got to scorch the earth. You can't do that. Well, we got to rebuild anew. You can't do that. I think we. I think we give the whole family the chair. What's the? That's that's also not a good idea. But what? uh, What? What's the thing called that? when they used to like sterilize people that had bad genetics what's it called it's someone someone come in on the chat and say it like um they were doing it in sweden and shit that's why everyone's blonde and i got ended in like, like the eugenics 80s. eugenics thank yeah. you man i could not think of that one i was like urology that's not it jesus well you know that's why i don't like SZA. SZA, the singer who is from st louis i don't like her at all because she had a homophobic tweet and I always call her a homophobic eugenicist because she was saying that there's so many black gay men now that she doesn't want to have a baby unless she can genetically engineer having a girl. That that's that's a whole that's a whole thing. That's its own thing in itself. But that's why <laughs> I don't fuck with her. I've never fucked with her, and I even love the style of music she does. I would be a fan if that hadn't happened. That, there's a lot coming from that, and you can't buy. I think it. most of it is ignorance and fear, really. Like they just don't understand that. I don't, I don't, it's just it just sounds crazy. What's wrong with being gay? Well, that's probably white privilege talking. I guess because it's easier for us to be gay than for other types of people to be gay. And you know, you're probably right. And I don't, I've never really lived outside of myself, so I can't really speak for anyone other, any other person's situation. But I th- I say if you're gay, be gay. I don't know. And I think that's a big part of the movement right now, though, is acknowledging that. Uh, um, SZA, not SIA, SZA, S Z A. Uh huh. Um, Carson thought I was talking about SIA. I love SIA. SIA no, I, is I, not a homophobe. I don't think SIA is a eugenist or a, or a homophobe. SIA is a lovely lady. SZA is a homophobic eugenicist. There you go. But eugenicist, that's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we need to decriminalize a lot of things, and a lot of those things are being perpetrated in their current state by economic concerns that are totally valid, but it represents how we need to transform a lot of different aspects of our economy to make more sense to make us as a public healthier and kinder people. For example, of what I'm talking about, prison guard unions are fighting to keep the war on drugs on the table. That doesn't make any sense. I don't want those people not to have jobs. Oh, no, but I don't want people to be in prison for cannabis. I definitely don't either. But I mean, that's also just because the uh, like most, if not like I don't know, it's like seventy percent of the American uh, prison systems are privatized. So it's a business. It's always a business. Yeah. We could circle back to a million different problems in this country. It's all going to come down to one thing: someone's making money on something. And that's it. And that's why they push for it, like without caring for the people, the actual general general population of this country is not cared for because there is that top tier fucking tax bracket fucking individual that's making their nut on the on someone else's downfall. Why? Why that's is horrible. it gonna be their nut? Because the nut feels I good. I just that's, that's watched it making money feels good. I just watched Step Brothers the other day. If you fuck with my nut, Brennan, yeah, exactly. That's a thing. I don't know. It's it's a it, it's a win to them, and they don't care about who goes down in the process as long as they stay afloat on their on their fucking dragon horde. It's again, get your fucking boomer ass out of the cave. We need that treasure. People are literally trying to build pipe bombs in their stepdad's basement so they can kill their classmates. 
I was talking to friends about this before. Also, it comes to other situations. This kind of actually makes sense, like fix, like fixing the water in Flint, Michigan. Why is that not done? Because if they do it for them, then they're going to have to do it for a lot of other fucking cities. And you know what? It, it makes a lot more sense than to just ship them water bottles and uh, charge people a fucking ass load of money to fix them when they get sick from drinking the water. Because the American healthcare system is a business, also. Uh, then it would like fix the issue. If they make more money on this situation than they would in the long run spending money to fix things they should have fixed decades ago. Money's the, the situation, dude. Money's the situation, dude. Yeah, that's the whole reason that everything's so fucked up. <laughs> It's because money is the situation. And it's just because somebody at one point in time had something in their hand that they thought was valuable and they decided to trade it for certain things. And they're like, well, why trade things when we can print something and tell you it's worth something? You know, I was thinking about Ron Perlman today. Life. What about Ron Perlman? My fav- one of my top five favorite movies of all time is called The Last Supper. It's an early Cameron Diaz sort of thing. I've not seen that. And uh, Ron Perlman. So it's about these like we've probably talked about it on the show before. It's like one of my favorite movies of all time, but it's really obscure. Um, he plays this like conservative TV host. And the movie is about these grad students who all live together and they start killing people that they think are bad. And oh, that's blade Two, dude. You got this mixed up. I'm having the worst deja vu right now. <laughs> and, um, uh, anyway, um, that's one thing Ron Perlman's character says when he's on his TV show, and he, uh, uh, and it's a, maybe even about Columbus Day, about how Columbus Day shouldn't be a day, which is to wasn't that yesterday? Is that today? Is today Monday? It's Indigenous People's Day today. Yep. So he's saying, I mean, what? You have a bunch of people running around using seashells for money. You did all that dig just to say that line. That's what it reminded me of. Okay. Um, it's well, such think? a great movie, mm-hmm. The Last Supper. I think I bought it on. Um, Amazon or something if you want to watch it. Well, it's like, you know, everyone like jokes nihilistically about how uh, how time is the construct of man. Time? Yeah. Time is a construct. It was created by somebody. Just like money. And it was told you that, that and then it was created and then someone told you, hey, this is a cool idea. What if we make your life revolve around this concept? Time. Boom. Money. Boom. Everything that you need. So it was created by someone that the exact same creature as you are. It's kind of fucking bullshit. Yeah. I'm still going to go to work tomorrow or, you know, tomorrow. Yeah, I'm still going to go to work tomorrow. Do you feel like our childhood would have been easier if both our parents didn't have their own mortgage to pay? Um... I think that we were blessed with a. I don't like using the word blessed, but we were very <laughs> much. Did, we were naturally. very, very much blessed with a, a very solid support system on both sides of the family. There were people there that could help out with handling us when our parents were doing what they were doing. You know, Mark, our, our father started his own business. Uh, and it seems since he's still doing it, it was a successful but business. Do you and feel our like mother the, was working full time and going to school full time like and trying to feed though? two giant fucking children? Yeah, but don't you feel like you're guilt about that? I, I do. I feel appreciation more than I feel guilt. They brought us into these worlds. They did the best they could in the situation. No, right. Upward. But wouldn't it have been, have been easier on them if it wasn't such a cutthroat economic situation? I don't, no. think, it, I don't think it would have been easier on them if they were still in the same household. Not, no. not especially at the no, time. No, no, no. No, no, That's I didn't want that either. So then what are you really asking? Them having two mortgages was like their own situation as adults in America who need to buy things. I'm going to keep doing it. Do it what? Hmm? It's going to bring it back to money. It's fine. Uh, no, but I'm saying that you and I were lucky. There are a lot of people that were not as lucky as you and I were when it came to that situation. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm not saying that. Would it have been easier for everyone if there was not two mortgages and two very separate people that were both held with the responsibility of the creatures that they brought into this earth? Sure. But, you know shit happens creatures you, we are creatures Did you just call me a creature you're a fucking you're you're a basement troll right now i am kind of hunched over here and you're wearing I a can, camo t-shirt that goes down to your knees i think you got dress. it you got i think it, it's a dress you got it at a truck stop i think it's my wife's you got it if i hit my <laughs> it's kind of a nice faint camouflage mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i wear a lot of my wife's clothes faded camo mm-hmm. it's, it helps us feel connected you shouldn't wear those tank tops though well, I know she says that too. You got your titty hanging out. I can't do it. Yeah, this titty pops out. You know what? The other day I came down here to stream some Apex Legends at uh, twitch.com, uh, twitch.tv slash Jacob V. 
and, and your titty was out at Jacob VSTL, and uh, it just boots up in the stream view with the PS2. No, what is it? <laughs> the PS2, the PS4, the PS4 probably, and uh, and the camera in the same stream queue together and it was me shirtless all the lights on big old hairy <laughs> nipple hanging out i literally jumped i scared myself yeah. oh from one basement troll to another why don't you say we wrap this up i really appreciate you coming on the show wrap this up i'm enjoying myself what else i mean aren't we running out of material mm. i suppose you want we can keep talking with the headphones on if that's what you like but we no, should let the audience go we can let the audience go and um it's been a good hour and a half or so has it really what time is it absolutely it's three in the oh, morning God. no it's not it's 20 to 11 and um central standard uh i really want to start doing podcasts again every week uh joe will come back whenever joe has time to come back well you know i'm off on mondays and um that's really all the invitation i need mm-hmm. patreon.com slash jacob v uh, my brother is uh, a member of the Patreon. It supports this show, and the support on Patreon is really what brought the show back. I'm, I'm a majority shareholder, and I'd like to be said. I'd like to be said that way. You're a good twenty percent right now, I think. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. You know what? Uh, my lovely mother-in-law came in at the five dollar tier. You're at the four dollar tier. Are you saying that you can buy love? I'm just saying that if there's a VIP tier, there's one person paying $5 a month and everyone else is paying $4 a month. You know, last time I paid for a VIP experience, it really didn't feel like a VIP experience and I'm never going to fall. Okay. At the $4 tier, you've guest hosted the show for 90 minutes. Br go ahead. Go ahead and bring our stepmother on here. Have her do the show with you then. No, no, no. Mother-in-law. Oh, I thought you said, I thought you said stepmother. Oh, did I? I might've. No, I definitely said mother-in-law. Okay. I don't know that my stepmom is on my Patreon yet, but that's patreon.com slash Jacob V. Donnie. Love you. Love you, Don. Anyway. I love everybody. What else is going on, though? Um, Patreon is really good this week. There were some demos of a song that's coming on our next album. Um, there's been a lot of videos. We want to start doing... Um, more in-depth stuff for the Patreon, just because the it's a mix of you know platform. We can post all sorts of different media there. So let us know what you want to do. I know Andy on Patreon wants us to do some guitar-related demo stuff, some oh, gear-related stuff. Definitely could. Um, we have a lot of musicians on the Patreon, um, or even like a, a, even I, a Clay. I was you know, buddy. I was thinking about our band Tipsy Whistle, and I have a lot of material working for our rockabilly fucking outlaw country album that we're working on. And Very I excited. think I think if we start working on that and posting behind the scenes stuff to the Patreon and then releasing the material on Patreon first, I think people would really love that. Oh, that's that's also doable yeah it's an outlaw country rockabilly duo it's just the two of us it's jacob v and baby brother it's tipsy whistle and we have um we have a song called it's hard to dance on gravel which is which is, is true it's factual we have a song called mama got one of those we got um uh, i'm working on a new one now called granddaddy's glock i still think granddaddy's pistol would be more fitting to the situation see this is the artistic controversy that goes on in tipsy whistle behind the scenes this is what you're missing out on on patreon.com slash jacob v is us having these artistic differences it's what broke wonderwall uh wonderwall was oasis broke them right up what no it didn't oh yeah they hated each other they had artistic differences kill shot one-liners my friend austin shout out to austin oberg gave us that one today what are your favorite kill shot one-liners like from movies like they're about to kill somebody and they say something like oh, my arnold schwarzenegger anytime in the 1990s really what did he say give me a good one though i'm uh, sure he had i mean i mean not, dozens not of just them. like hasta la vista baby or whoever someone created that whole thing but no there's like there's a couple of really good ones or even him in the Batman movie, he had so many one-liners. As Mr. Freeze? As Mr. Freeze, yeah. He would just be like, chill. Yeah. Chill. Yeah. He'd freeze a guy to death and he'd go <laughs> tell him to chill. Yeah. He'd turn a guy into an ice block. Uh, we're working on a song called Porta John Glory Hole. Which has a B-side that is public nudity. Public nudity. Mm -hmm. um, other kill shot one-liners like um, uh, Yippie Kaye Motherfucker. I mean that's a that's a good one I guess. There's, um, always, there's always a situational thing like someone's like hooked on 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 a torp, uh, hooked on a rocket that's on a Harrier jet or something and it just kind of like 
you know surprise motherfucker you got a plane to catch or something yeah. like that yeah, yeah. yeah. something yeah, yeah, yeah. stupid something where you got to put kill on your... shot wine ladder get off my plane get off mm. my plane where's <laughs> my family <laughs> I don't know why you turned you turned Harrison Ford into the 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 gay brother from Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, that's funny. I don't. Oh, I can't. I can't chat back right now. This is just a chat monitor. You're giving me a lot of demands. You could post my Patreon link in the chat. I said it already. Patreon.com says J A C O B V I. Find us on Instagram at Jacob V Weekly. Oh, follow us wherever you get your podcasts: Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podbean. Please subscribe, rate, review, share. Any kind of interaction helps the show, which I hope is actually going to remain weekly now that we've returned. Uh, uh, we still curate a monthly Spotify playlist. We have not missed one of those. We are in October 21 right now. So go to Spotify and look for Jacob V's favorite songs. You'll see them listed by month and year. Mm -hmm. Updated frequently. I'm working on one right now. And then you can go back to any podcast that I've been in and where we're just shooting from the hip the whole time. Yeah, I thought you did great today. I'm so proud of you. And I'm just, I feel safe with you holding my back right now and just holding me down. And so I really felt I'm, good bringing the show back with somebody that I could just really feel safe with. You know what I mean? I'm on the other side of the room. But I just feel safe. Well, that's good. I'm Maybe because like, you're on the other side of the room. I can't even move. There's a 22 pound cat on me, he's at least 32. I'm telling you, those cats are 30 pounds. I'm not joking. I, I have noticed that, that King has gotten bigger, yes. Oh, I mean, he's five now. My problem is Hans never grew a neck. You know, 10 years, we're having a quinceanera. And they're like six now. Nine years. We're, it's 2030s when we're having... Yeah, it is nine years. Mm -hmm. The 2030s when the quinceanera is happening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to get them both nice dresses. Hopefully those stores are still open. What stores? Quisinera stores, the, the stores where you go to buy stuff for Quisinera. Uh, like I dresses. figured I'd get all the stuff online. Oh, you could probably find some good cat dresses. I look, think look it's in. I think it's in the about section of the stream. Is patreon.com slash Jacob V. I have to quit watching are the you, chat. Are you so dead set on that situation there? You've already plugged yourself a million times. No, so I know, but I, I, the chat is acting like they... Oh, they're trolling me. Ladies That's what's happening. It's Jacob V. Weekly. He is gullible. That's what's happening. He they're, trying to keep, they're trying to keep it going. Calf. They're trying to stretch it out. They're trying to keep it going. This is why, you know, maybe the live, maybe the live stream is overrated. Maybe we need a manager. Hey, we're hiring a producer. If you've listened this Jacob far, Jacob V Weekly, I'll give you five dollars a month. You could have gotten off five minutes ago. We've talked about nothing for the last five minutes. That's but the chat kept me in. You That's got the, chat trolled. It's the beauty and the curse. As a streamer, you should be better and above that. Great move. Get a guest for the show. Keep them trapped with a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob V. Weekly, out. <laughs>